joining for the first time um, and you're not familiar with the live stream, I'm Cindy Williams and I'm your host, Cindy Williams. This is Bliss to Abundance, our show. And I, my purpose in life is to inspire and motivate others to follow their bliss into abundance. And uh, I always say I like a few things. I like crazy <laughs> earrings. I like amazing coffee cups. This is a new one. It's kind of plain, but I don't know what you guys think. Usually I bring a travel one because we do a lot of travel related stuff, but it just has kind of like a nice marble on it. So uh, this is a, a new one. I'm a sucker for a coffee mug, right? Um, and I love travel, right? So earrings, coffee mugs, travel, got those three things. I am in my group. But uh, every week we do a live stream and um, we try to bring topics or interviews to y'all that will inspire you. And today we're going to be talking about failure and the fact that really failure is not the enemy. Um, and how you can actually take failure, use it to your advantage, and leverage it for growth in your business. Did you know that was even a thing? Probably not, because I know failure is one of those things where it evokes a lot of feelings in us, and where does that come from, right? Um, when we're kids, that's where it starts, right? We are all in environments where Failure is your enemy. You're either a winner or you're a loser. We are set up in a competitive environment from the time we enter school with who's got the top grades, who's the top player on the sports team, who's the fastest runner, who's this, who's that. And it's a very competitive environment that we are brought up in. And it starts very young in childhood that you start to evoke feelings that when you fail or when you don't win or when you're not number one, what happens? How does that make you feel? And as children, right, it's like win, win, win. And if you don't win, all of a sudden, not winning gets attached to your worth and your value in this weird, twisted way. Um, you know, with our children, we try to, you know, going through these patterns and breaking free of them and realizing what happens when you can break free. With our kids, we, uh, we try to flip the script, and I encourage you guys to do that too. We're going to dig into failure for business here in a second, but we really try to, you know, when our kids go, oh, this didn't work, we go, great, so you just learned one way not to do it. What did you learn? My husband has this great thing, like when the kids, if they drop something on the floor or something happens or they try something that doesn't work, he goes, what did you learn? You know, we don't make it a big deal that it didn't work and so that's not good or you're not good. You have to kind of flip the script. But how most of us were brought up, and it's still today, it's, it's, it's very much a competitive environment. So we start to attach failure to, uh, you know, I'm not worthy. Or, you know, when you fail, it doesn't feel good. And it makes you internalize feelings and it makes you... Uh, feel like you're embarrassed sometimes or you're not you don't have the same worth that others that do things better right so you start to attach all this crap and it becomes like this twisted gross yucky thing and then failure becomes this thing where you're like well if there's a chance i'm gonna fail mm -mm, not doing that again not going that road not going down that road and the the sad part about that is is really if you if you're sitting in that environment where you're afraid, afraid, afraid to fail, it's like you put yourself in this protective bubble, right? And, and it, it, becomes, it becomes almost suffocating. Hey, good morning, guys. I see everyone saying hi. Oh, Elma, your first time on. Welcome. Hey, Stacy. Um, so I'm watch, trying to watch you guys on all these different streaming services. So if I need a hello or I miss a hello or a note or a question, I will go back later. And if you're, by the way, if you're listening to our podcast, we stream uh, the show live on Amazon and Roku on um, the Raven International Network and also on YouTube. You can catch these shows later if you're listening to it and you want to see any of the visuals um, or this crazy lady that's talking to you right now. <laughs> Um, but anyway, back to, you know, when we're kids, you end up in this cycle where you're not trying or you don't try unless you feel like the odds are in your favor. Like, unless I'm sure it's going to work, I'm not going to do it. So essentially, you keep yourself, what happens is you keep yourself in this safe little bubble. And, you know, it feels comfortable. It feels safe. But meanwhile, your soul is screaming. 
because dreams, the big stuff, the juicy stuff, it can't flourish in the bubble. You can never get to that big space, right? Like dreams require space. They require risk. They require stepping outside of that comfort zone. So that's the problem when you're in that bubble and you're in that space and you're avoiding failure so much that it is holding you back from making decisions that could change your life, that could help you access your dreams, that could help you, help you step into a new reality. And you can never really get to the good stuff, right? So the way that I think about it is like expansion and restriction, they cannot coexist. You're either here in the bubble or you're in a place where you're open to expanding the next thing, the open thing, the big thing, allowing your dream, your vision, your thing to have space to breathe. Because over here in that safe, in that safe little bubble where you're not going to try anything new and you're not going to risk anything and you're not going to step out in the, the fear of failure, you, you're, you're, you're not, never going to get to the juicy stuff. You're never going to get to the good stuff. You can never get to that state of expansion where really your dreams can, can take flight and can, can grow, right? So you have two choices at that point where you realize you're there, right? And if you're in that space, like, there's no judgment. We've all been there. Like, this is safe. It feels fine. It feels good. But if you have that little voice in the back of your head, you have that little calling, you're in that season of, I'm meant for something more, that season that I've always wanted to do X, Y, Z, or that season of, you know, I, if I wasn't afraid, I would fill in the blank. Nine times out of 10, that's what you should be doing with your life. But the fear and staying in the bubble is holding you there, right? So you have, you have a couple of options. You can stay in the bubble and have this illusion of safety, but really you're stuck in the bubble, right? Or you can get good at failing. Oh my God, did I just say that? You can, good, you can get good at failing. Cindy, are you crazy? Have you lost your mind? What was in your coffee this morning? Yeah, I said it. Like it's the secret that entrepreneurs know. No one gets to, you know, high, high levels of succeeding their dreams, creating amazing things that happen, being an innovator, being an entrepreneur without having road bumps. It doesn't happen. It doesn't just unfold perfectly for everyone, no matter who you are. It's in the failures that you grow. It is in the failures that you learn what not to do. It is in the failures that you will start the expansion process. So... I want to um, share a secret. Entrepreneurs know if you fail often, you succeed faster. That's a new quote. I don't know if anyone's ever said that, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trademark that. <laughs> if you fail, if you fail often, you will succeed faster. I'm gonna tell you an awesome story from my real life. So when I was in um, college, and a lot of you know, like. <laughs> I majored in theater and minored in business, but my real love was theater, like coming out of high school. And um, when I start, like in high school, I had a pretty good high school experience. Like I was in musical theater and like my freshman year, I was cast in a great role and I had all these great roles the first three years. And then my senior year I was kind of devastated because normally your senior year, like you get one of the two main parts and I had had big parts all the way through. Anyway, auditioned and I didn't get a lead. In fact, I was like cast as the narrator. And at the time it felt like, oh, my life had failed because I'd had so much success leading up to it when I didn't expect that failure. I was crushed. I was up until that point, you know, my little 18 years of life, I was like, this is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. Whoa, you know, typical like teenager. But I totally expected to get the lead role as the senior in the plays that year. And I was devastated. And I was like, I don't think I can recoup from this. I don't think I can get back on stage. I was, my confidence was so shot down that I was like, I don't want, I'm not sure I want to do it anymore. And, you know, my parents said, look, you have a choice. Like there's no small roles, you know, if there's no, there's only small actors, right? So make a choice. Like you committed that you were going to try out, you got this part, you can take it or not, but there's some value in the humility of going through that process of, yeah, you've had leads and things up until this point, and now you're taking a step back and taking the smaller role. You can do the right thing and take it, or you can give up. Take, pick, pick one, right? 
So me being the person like, oh, like I didn't want to do it, but I didn't want to give up. Like giving up to me was worse. So I went through that process and the first, <laughs> you guys, I was so confident on stage the first three years. Like I had singing roles, had all these lines, everything went off without a hitch. I stepped on the last, like when you're doing a play or a musical or whatever, the last night, like the dress rehearsal, they usually invite people like from the community. And um, that's what we did. And I, when I stepped out into the stage and the lights hit my eyes, I froze. I freaking froze. Like it was like, and this is, you know, I know a lot of people don't like public speaking, but like being on stage is my thing of, you know, having been through all those plays. And I was like, oh my God. I forgot my lines and I said the first two lines and I froze and I went to the last line of this giant dialogue I had and it was horrific. Like I was like, I don't know if I can do like my confidence was just shot. But the next night I got on stage, I got through it. I got through the next three nights of the run of the show and done. And then at that point I had another choice because right, because I'm a senior. So I'm going into college. And up until that point, I had loved theater so much. I just thought that's what I was going to do the rest of my life. And then I didn't get that part. And I was like, oh, my God, maybe this isn't for me. But I made a choice. I said, look, I'm going to go forward. I'm going to go into the college environment. And let's see what happens. So my first week, you know, I'm signed up for all my theater classes. And there's a fire in me. Like, I had this horrible thing happen. I'm going to overcome it. And what does the director, the teacher say day one? He's like, all right, look, here's how it's going to work in the semester you are going to go out and you're going to go to 10 auditions every single month until you get a part. And he's like, you're not going to get most of them. You might not get any of them. But if you really are serious about doing this in your life or doing this as a part of what you want to do, you have got to get so good at rejection, so good at failure, so good at recognizing that sometimes when you go out for a part, the timing wasn't right, the other actor wasn't right, maybe you didn't have the right color, hair color, maybe you didn't have the right height, there's a million reasons why you don't get picked. Sometimes it's not your talent, but you need to build up this endurance to fail. Otherwise you will never make it in theater. And I thought, Oh, awesome. This is going to be fun, right? <laughs> so this is going to be like a repeat times a thousand of my senior year. So what did I do? I did. I went out audition after audition after audition after audition. And guess what happened? I didn't get stuff. I didn't get stuff. I didn't get stuff. Cause now I'm on, I'm auditioning for stuff in the city. It's not my little high school, right? It's the local community theaters, the civic theaters everywhere that we had an audition. I had to run all over town, but after a while, and I'll never forget, like the first one wasn't a small part. The first one I got cast in after dozens of auditions was Mary Hatch from It's a Wonderful Life. Do you guys remember the old Jimmy Stewart movie? I got a lead role. Holy shit. I was worthy. Like I was fully redeemed at that point. Like, okay, high school, I was able, I had to go through all these failures, but then I got a lead role. <clears throat> and after that, it was crazy. Like I had the routine down. I knew I was not going to get everything. I knew it was about consistency and endurance and showing up and giving my best. And sometimes you got it and sometimes you didn't. And I, and as I did plays and uh, musicals and all that stuff. I got better and I got better and I got more parts and more parts. And then I was doing, I got a uh, cabal in um, cowboy mouth. I got the lead there. I got into Shakespeare and the park theater. And then I got auditions for commercials and it was like, Whoa! it was like all this stuff was happening. Right. So, but the path to get there was like failure after failure after failure. And it's the same thing in business guys. It really, really is. If you don't give yourself permission to fail and permission to try, it will never happen. It just won't. <clears throat> so what can you do? I'm going to give you a couple of my favorite pointers. The first thing I think, um, stop equating failure to your worth. You know, just like with the theater scenario, um, you know, Mr. Sobolski, Actors Theater, Grand Rapids, love him so much. Um, he said, look, sometimes it's not your talent. Sometimes it's not the right timing. It's not the right height. It's not the right whatever. Don't take it personal. Like you got to let it roll off your back. You get your monologues ready and you go to the next one. You go to the next one. You go to the next one. And eventually you are going to have some success, right? Because you're either going to get a part or you're going to learn something that helps you move on to the next thing. The other thing is really start to see 
your failures as a necessary part of your growth. You cannot grow unless you are failing. I know that sounds crazy, right? You cannot grow unless you're failing. You have to fail to learn what not to do. You have to fail to get better. Think about if you guys have kids, you know this. Like they, you t keep trying, keep trying. You're encouraging them and then you don't apply that same uh, process to your business or to your own mindset. So understanding failure is part of the process if you want to grow. Um, I love the Nelson Mandela quote. It's one of my favorite quotes. I never lose. I never lose. I either win or I learn. Nelson Mandela. I either win or I learn. It's not a failure. It's a learn. It's a what did you learn and move on. Giving yourself that space to fail and get better, giving yourself permission to uh, know that there's going to be failures along the way only makes you better. Hey, Bridget. I see you guys saying, hey, Angela. Hey, Sandy. Welcome, welcome. Um, so the, on the only thing with failure is, and the best advice I can give you is, as long as you get the lesson, it's not a failure. As long as you get the lesson, it is not a failure, right? Um, and by the way, the real time you only fail is, is the time you stop, the time you give up, the time you go, you know what, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm throwing in the towel. That's the, only, that's the only failure. If you keep at it, you will get there. So I'm gonna encourage you guys, um, to really learn and in, lean into your purpose, follow your bliss, whatever that is. Uh, if travel is your thing, then reach out to us at Careers on Vacation. That's what I do all day long. I teach people how to get their travel businesses supersized, get your mindset in the right place so you can operate like an entrepreneur and expand your business to whatever crazy heights that you want to grow it to. Um, and I want to leave you guys with a quote. So this one is from John A. Shedd. A ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are made for. If your soul is screaming for something else in your life, if it's screaming for more, if you feel like you were meant for more because you were, all of you have a life's purpose. I don't know if that's running an awesome travel business, but whatever your life's travel, whatever your life's, I'm through travel in there because I love travel, that's my life's purpose. But whatever your life's purpose is, whatever that thing is, you are here to do something amazing. I'm a firm believer, like if everyone just follows their bliss, this planet would be so much better off. So whatever your thing is, I want it to sit with that today. Recognize that there's gonna be failure, there's gonna be problems. Wake up and eat the problems for breakfast. Know that's part of the process to get better. The quicker you get to failing, the quicker you're gonna to get to succeeding. So I'm gonna leave you guys with that today. As always, I wish you so much love, so much abundance. Uh, thanks for watching. Click the little CTR that you're catching the replay and finding the, this content valuable. And you guys have an amazing day. We'll see you next week. I love you so much. Bye, guys. Meg loves to travel. She's tired of her stressful job and wishes she could have her own travel business. Meg heard travel agents get amazing discounts and work from home or while they travel. This sounds perfect, but Meg has no idea where to start. Meg is worried she will fail because she's never worked in travel and launching a business is overwhelming. That's when Meg found Careers on Vacation, which taught Meg everything she needed to launch her portable, profitable travel business. Meg got to work with industry expert Cindy Williams and the Careers on Vacation team to launch her travel business in just weeks. Now Meg is helping families book dream vacations, earning amazing commissions, and traveling the world. Meg is so grateful she found careers on vacation.